In just about 30 minutes, a group of Washington, D.C. leaders will reconvene the first constitutional convention of this century. Their goal, to draft a state constitution in hopes of getting D.C. admitted as the 51st state in the Union. Of course, statehood has been on the minds of residents ever since the district was incorporated in the early 1800s. But now leaders are hoping to capitalize on some recent momentum. President Obama voiced his support for D.C. statehood back in 2014. And just last week, Senator Bernie Sanders renewed his support for making D.C. the 51st state, right outside the White House. The new Columbia Statehood Commission lists their reasoning for statehood in the convention resolution. It includes that D.C. has a larger population than Wyoming and Vermont, and like the license plate says, they pay billions of dollars in taxes without a voting member of Congress. Now, if residents approve this Constitution, which organizers hope to get on the ballot in D.C. this November, then the district would need to apply to Congress to gain admittance. Right now, of course, Republicans dominate both houses of uh, the legislative branch. So it's hard to imagine them approving a new state that will become an instant Democratic Party stronghold. But if the Democrats return to the majority, could it be time to add another star to the flag? It's not that hard, as you can see. We can find an easy place to put it. Here with me now is Washington, D.C. Mayor and now Statehood Commission member, Ariel Bowser. I want to do uh, a quick uh, disclosure here. My wife did some work on your campaign a couple of years ago. Uh, Madam Mayor, good to see you. Good to see you, Chuck. Always. So, so New Columbia. Yes. That's okay. Right. Uh, look, the push for statehood has gone, you know, up and down over the years. You want to do this via a constitutional convention because it avoids having the entire country vote on statehood. Explain. Well, uh, we were we were here. Uh, Kathy Lanier yeah. and Kaya Henderson and I were here a few days after I was sworn in last year. We mm -hmm. talked about statehood then, and I told you we would we would go a different way. We would set a bold path and a new direction, and that's what the people of the District of Columbia want. They pay taxes more than 22 states. Uh, we operate in many ways like a state. Um, the major difference being that we don't have a vote in Congress. Our Congresswoman doesn't have a vote and we don't have any representation in the Senate. Uh, so what we're doing is what other states have done. Uh, we're following the Tennessee plan mm -hmm. uh, where we go to our voters first and say, do you want to be a state? Are you willing to commit to a representative form of government? Let's get the Constitution done, set our map, and have a vote. Um, and that's exactly what we're planning to do. And when we do that in November, what we will present uh, to the new president and the new Congress mm -hmm. is a new vote from the people of the District of Columbia Columbia saying that they're willing uh, to take on statehood for Washington, D.C. And by going this route, it means you just submit the Constitution. Essentially, you submit the application to Congress. Yes. And it's and it just takes Congress to approve this. It, the Congress it doesn't take admit, a. It doesn't take no, other. No, it doesn't okay. take changing the U.S. Constitution to admit a state, and that's exactly what we're going to do. What the Constitution says is that there must be a federal district, uh, and so we have uh, drafted boundaries for a federal district uh, that would contain the seat of the U.S. government, and the balance of the territory would become the new state. So essentially, you'd carve out. Where all the federal buildings are. Yes. And in that little area of Constitution, maybe a couple blocks one way, and Independence a couple blocks the well, other way. It's a, it would be a very robust federal district. Uh, fair, fair enough there. One of the things that I think you're going to have a challenge with is what goes into this Constitution that goes on the ballot this November. Some people want probably to make a lot of political statements. Yes. You don't. Uh, well, a constitution uh, should lay out uh, how the government will work. Uh, and then by law, like we do, like the, the, the D.C. Council does every single day, it sets out new laws that, that can include the, everything from the kitchen sure. sink. But that's not really what a constitution is about. Uh, so what we have laid out uh, is very similar to the way district government works. And we think our government works pretty well. We have balanced our budget for 21 straight years. We have $2 billion in the bank. We're the fastest improving urban school district in the country. The problem with our form of government is that we don't have any representation in the Congress, and that is what we seek to change. What is your argument to Republicans who may just look at this political? It's like, boy, 
especially if Democrats win the Senate, and obviously Democrats are more supportive of this right now than, than Republicans are, well, Republicans may still control the House and say, why do we want to hand Democrats two more Democratic uh, well, Republic What do you say to What's the conservative argument, argument to conservatives about giving D.C. statehood? Uh, the, 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 arg the American argument is that uh, people who pay taxes deserve a, vo a voice and a vote in Congress. And Republicans, like Democrats, go all over the world uh, spreading democracy. And my question to them is how can they do that and have the citizens in their own capital uh, not have a vote in the Congress. And so for us, this is not a Democrat or Republican issue. This is a nonpartisan issue. And that that's our argument that we will make to the DNC and the argument that we'll, we will also make to the RNC is that people in the District of Columbia deserve statehood. Now, there was a time when people said uh, that many things that are the law of the land now, uh, we couldn't think of uh, being approved uh, in, in state legislatures, by the Supreme Court. Uh, and even in the Congress, and we think that the time uh, now is is for statehood. All right, you've carved out a small federal district, right? Uh, as a with, robust I, federal I, district. Fair enough. I could see a member of Congress or two coming to you and say, "That's a great idea. Let's put the rest of the residents. You want statehood? Join Maryland. Join Virginia." What do you say to that? Why, why is that? Not the right call. Well, not only do the people of Washington, D.C. not want that, Chuck, mm -hmm. the people of Maryland and Virginia don't want that either. We've had hundreds of years of a, a political identity like they have. Uh, and we are, uh, we are a population that's larger than two states. Uh, so there's no reason to make the argument that this political entity that raises and spends its own money uh, should be any different than any other American state. All right. We will leave it there. And by the way, you wouldn't change the Electoral College. And that, yes. it's still the same. That's, still that's correct. Same. So uh, n people have nothing to fear. There's nothing to lose um, by giving 700,000 taxpaying Washingtonians the same rights pretty as confident. other Americans. So this Constitution, you think it will get on the ballot in November? You're pretty I'm confident pretty confident that. Uh, that we will. We've had a robust discussion um, with our residents, and uh, they want uh, to be counted. New Columbia, here New we go. New Columbia. All right. Thanks, Chuck. Okay, someday I may call you governor. Is that what you're saying? Why not? There you go. Madam Mayor, nice to see you. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.